blameless and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Jesus mounted the donkey and rode into Jerusalem. Many laid their cloaks on the road before him and brought palm branches to wave and celebrate. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the son of David. But not all who were there understood him. Some called him only a prophet, believing him wise, but denying his divinity. Some raged and cheered for a revolution, hoping he would liberate them from their oppressors. To others, it was nothing more than an interruption. Even as children ran to him and shouted for joy, his enemies wove through the crowd, watching, seething, plotting. The range of reactions was great and wide. Celebration, worship, revolutions, deception, cynicism, condemnation, boredom, disinterest. But every single person had to confront one thing, who he was. Behold, your king is coming to you. Uh, behold, your king is coming to you. Matthew chapter 21, verse 9, the crowd that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes. In the name of the Lord, Hosanna! In the highest. In the highest. I want to take this opportunity to welcome young lady to see Walter. Thank you for coming. Indeed. On this first Palm Sunday, Jesus was praised as King. Amen. When Jesus rode into Jerusalem on the back of a donkey, the people laid their garment and palm branches and shouted, Hosanna, yes. which means save now. This enthusiastic crowd was anxious to welcome a king who would overthrow the Roman and put an end to the empire occupy, occupation of Israel. That was their hope. But that was not Jesus' intention. That was not Jesus' plan. Not at all. He had a bigger plan. He had bigger things in store. His intention was not to overthrow the Roman government, but to overthrow death and conquer the grave. Amen. Instead of saving them from an empire, emperor, he wanted to save them and also us from our sins. This crowd shouted, Hosanna, would soon be shouting, crucify him. I want to talk to you more about this in my message today, on this Palm Sunday, on the subject, King for a day. King for a day. The crowd shouted Hosanna. But they only wanted him to be king just for that day. The story begin all begin when Jesus sent two of his disciples to get a donkey with his colt for him. Go over to the village across from you. You will find a donkey tied there. Her coat with her. Jesus said to the disciples, untie the donkey. Bring them. And bring them. Amazing. Untie them and bring them. <coughs> Excuse me. And if anybody asks you, what are you doing? Jesus said, Tell them the master need them yes. and he will send them. I, I'm going to talk to you today 
about being ready to be used by God. Mm -hmm. They said for you to remember something, you got to be said to you about three times. So you will hear me repeat certain things that I said before for you to get it. Look at the situation here just for a moment. Is the fact that this donkey is tied yes. and the colt is loose. Mm. But the fact that the donkey is tied, the colt is tied to. Yes. Amen. There's some stuff in your life that you're tied to or bound to, not because of you, no. but because of your family. Amen. Amen. Your grandmother used to do that. Yes. Your grandfather used to do this. Yes. Your daddy used to do this. Your mama used to do this. And you don't know why you're doing it, but you're doing the same thing. They did. Amen. Jesus said, Go. You're fine. The mother is tied. But the colt is there with the mother. In a sense, we find ourselves in situations sometimes where we're tied to tradition. We're, tried, we're tied to how we grew up and how it used to be. This was the way I go. This is the way I used to worship. This is the way I'm supposed to worship because we're tied to religion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I like what Jesus said. If anybody asks, tell them the master have use for them. Yes. Does the master have use for you this morning? Amen. Amen. He's getting ready to untie you right. because he got use for you. He said the disciples went and did exactly what Jesus told them to do. Are you willing to do what God told you to do? Amen. Amen. Why are we questioning when God tells us to go or when God tells us to do something? Why do we keep questioning it? He said these two disciples went and did exactly as God said. Too many times we turn to the left and we turn to the right. We don't want to do exactly what God said, but he's saying, do exactly as I have command you. And here what they did, they let the donkey and the coat out. Now watch this. Some of us as parents, we want our kids to change their ways. We want them to be a little bit more assertive. We want them to, to, to take on some more responsibility. But don't you see, we got to set the example. They didn't leave the colt out. All they did was leave the donkey out. Yeah. And the colt followed right behind. Right. It's time for you to start praying so your sons and your daughter will see what it is and how to pray. Amen. 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 We want our kids to be on fire. But are you on fire for God? Amen. He said he led the donkey out. And the coat follow. And what look what they did. They laid some of their clothes on them. Yes. And Jesus mounted. Okay. Now you have to understand, Jesus wanted to use the coat, mm -hmm. but they laid the clothes on both the donkey and the coat. Mm -hmm. In essence, when God gets ready to use everyone that's connected to you will be covered. Amen. When God gets ready to bless you, he don't just bless you, he bless everyone that is in your family. Yes. yes. Amen. He said nearly all the people in the crowd throw their garments down on the road, gave him a royal welcome. Others cut down the branches from the tree and throw them as a welcome man. In essence, there's some stuff we got to lay before Jesus on this Palm Sunday. Yes. And there's some stuff in our life, in our relationship, that we got to cut down. There's some friends we got to cut off. Yes. There's some stuff we like to go, places we like to go, we got to stop going there. Amen. Amen. So true. He said some of them cut down branches. Welcome back. The crowd that went ahead of the crowd that followed, all of them called out, Hosanna yes. to David's son. Blessed is he who comes in the name of God. Hosanna in the highest. Yes. As he made his entrance into Jerusalem, the whole city 
He said, we're shaking. Mm -hmm. The whole city got nervous. Mm -hmm. The whole city was in an uproar. Unnerved. People were asking, what's going on here? Who is this? Yes. The parade crowd answered, this is the prophet Jesus, the one from Nazareth. The real meaning of Palm Sunday for us can be found in the question, who is this? Who was Jesus? Perhaps the most important question in life is the one the people ask in our passage, and that's the question, who is this? Do we want a miracle? Jesus. Do we want a ritual? Jesus. Or do we want a military Jesus or a victorious Jesus? Everybody was looking for something different in Jesus, and most were disappointed in who really he was. Amen. Just like us. Depends on where we are and what situation we, is, we are in. We're looking for a specific Jesus. Mm. Some of us are looking for a Jesus to save our marriages. Mm. Some of us are looking for a Jesus to save our sons and our daughters. Some of us are looking for a financial Jesus. Mm. Some of us are looking for a Dr. Jesus. Yes, yes. We all are looking for our own unique yes. Jesus. Yes, yes. And you can hear the rolling that well, but it tells you about who was in the crowd. And I will help to tell you who was in the crowd. Who was in the crowd for, the, for Jesus? Here's what the crowd they wanted a miracle Jesus. They probably loved the fact that they thought that he thought them in parable. That were easy to understand. Mm -hmm. And that every now and then he will put the Pharisees and the Sadducees in their place. They like it when Jesus did this. So they wanted a miracle yes. working God because they have been there where he opened the eyes of the blind and he raised Lazarus and they knew about the cripple that he healed and the leper that he healed so they were looking for a miracle working God who else was in the crowd the Pharisees they wanted ritual a ritual Jesus they thought the most important matter of the religion of religion was to be found not in how, what in your heart, what you believe or what you pray, but in how you dress mm -hmm. and how you wash and ate. Mm -hmm. Ain't we like that? Mm -hmm. Or oh, we used to be like that. Sure. When we judge an individual by how they look, yeah. how they dress, yeah. whether they wear a hat or not, mm -hmm. how they look. And, and so we, we would condemn somebody whether they have a jewelry or not. But thank God, we are looking for a Jesus that we can find just like that. Amen. 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 There was a group in the crowd also that's called the Zealots. They were the militant of the day. The Zealots were the radical nationalists who were ready to use force, even terrorists. To overthrow the oppression hand of the Roman government. Yes. They were there and they were looking for a militant Jesus. Yes. They thought, here is Jesus. He's ready to overthrow the Roman government and give us our victory. Yes. And then who can forget that his disciples were there. Yes. They were looking for a victorious Jesus. If you read that ahead of, before Jesus came, they were talking about who is it that's going to be on his right hand? Mm -hmm. Who, which position am I going to get? <laughs> like we see so many times, I can pay hard for you. What cabinet position am I going to get? Yes. Uh, true. <laughs> who is Jesus? All of these different groups were in the crowd. 
that first Palm Sunday, each with their own private view of Jesus. As they were as they waved their palm branches, I have mine down there. I need my palm branches. Let me have my palm branches. It, come on. It, if you have your palm branch, as they wave their palm branches, look at them, waving their palm branches. And they're thinking, I'm going to get what I want. Yes. I've got my God. Yes. I've got my king for the day. Yes. I don't know what you want, but, but, but you're, if you were in the crowd that day, if you wanted somebody to heal your marriage, he said, yeah, he's going to heal my marriage. My marriage is going to be good this day. Ah, if you wanted your kids to, to, to be in a better position, you said, yes, my kids going to be all right. If you're looking for a job, you said, tomorrow morning, I'm going to get a job. We want you, Jesus, to yes. fulfill our situation. Yes. Yes. So the way of the palm leaf. Yes. Say, Jesus, Hosanna. Hosanna. Oh, God, I want something from you this yes. morning. I need you. Yes. 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 Like the, the way of the palm leaf. Yes. Because they were looking for Jesus. Yeah. Like that crowd on that first Palm Sunday. Someone you know may have expectations about God that are different than reality. <clears throat> the crowd assumed that he would do even more miracles in Jerusalem than he had done in Galilee. And the coming days will be filled with massive crowds and a frenzy for miracles. That's what they were expecting. Yeah. Like when the new president take over, there's a massive frenzy of executive order. Yes. Yes. They thought that Jesus was going to give them an executive order filled with miracles. By this time, though, the Pharisees have already decided that Jesus wasn't their king. To their liking, they floated on the edges of the crowd. Can you see them? Trying to catch him in a misstep so that they could turn the crowd against him. The zealots were thrilled that Jesus was finally bringing the revolution to the seat of the Roman power in Jerusalem. And the disciples expected this to be their greatest week of popularity and glory. But the expectation of all of these groups were quickly dashed yes. as the week progresses. Because you see, as the week progresses, they realize that they did not want a king forever. Mm -hmm. just for a day. They just needed a king for a day. Amen. Because they had their own private view of him. They were willing to allow Jesus to be king just for that day. Yes, that's what I mean. Like we. All I need you, Lord, is to heal my body. Mm -hmm. We treat God like he's a genie. Mm -hmm. When you want him, you rub that body and he comes up. Mm -hmm. And say, God, I need healing in my marriage. Your marriage is back, and you say, go back. I don't need you now. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, you lose your job, and you rub the water again. And say, God, I need you mm -hmm. to provide for me. And when he provides, you say, go back into your bottle. But I don't need a king for a day. I need a king forever. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you all ain't hearing me. Yeah. I need a king forever. Yeah. I want a king that will walk with me, oh. that will talk yeah. with me, yeah. and tell I belong to him. Yes. Amen. A king I can serve forever. Amen. Every day with him gets sweeter and sweeter and sweeter yes. as the day goes by. Yes. Yes. I want to ask you the question this morning. Who do you identify with in this story? Mm. Could it be that you are that man who owned the donkey? You have gift down inside of you that you have tied up that you're not using. God is saying, God said, send it me today to tell you, lose it and send it to me. I got use for it. Amen. 
I got news for your talent. I got news for that donkey and the cone that you have tied up. Yes, yes. I want to use it this morning. Yes, yes. Maybe you are the donkey and the coat. Yes. You've been tied up for a long while. Yes, yes. The word of God said, lose them. And if any man tell you or ask you, what is it? You tell them, the master has news for you. Amen. If you've been tied up in your life, God said, I'm ready to use you. Amen, amen. I'm ready to use you. Some of us are tied up in generational curse. God is ready to loose you from it. Amen, amen. Ready to loose you because he has use, he has need for you, for you this morning. Amen, amen. Maybe you are Hallelujah. the mother donkey. You want to see your kids change. You see, the younger one have never been ridden up on before. So the mother had to show it's all right to allow Jesus to sit on you. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Yes. You got to show your kids it's all right to lift your hands up and praise God. Yes. It's all right to trust God, even when it seems like it yes. makes yes. no sense. Yes. It's yes. called a crazy faith. Amen. Yes. We got to show them. Amen. Amen. Maybe we are fortunate. We might be that cold, mm. that thought we were nothing. Until the master sat in us. Yes. <laughs> yes. When he sat in that cold, that cold became famous. Amen. That some 2,000 years after, I'm preaching about that cold that Jesus sat on. Yes. God wants to use you in a way you have never been used before. Hallelujah. Give you new experience. Yes. New insight. Yes. New vision. New dreams. New opportunities. Because this coat has never been sat on before. God don't want us to just conform. No. But he wants us to be transformed. Yes. Maybe you are the two disciples. Who's willing to say. Whatever God say. I will do. I don't know how it's going to turn out. But I'm willing to trust him. Amen. I trust you Lord. He said, go. And the Bible said, they didn't turn to the left. They didn't turn to the right. They didn't look behind. They didn't ask for permission. But they went and did exactly as God commanded them to do. Yeah. And then maybe, just maybe, you are those who lay your clothes on the ground. What is it that is hindering you from receiving what God has for you? What is it he's asking you to lay before him? What is it that God is asking you on this Palm Sunday to lay before me? We can shout Hosanna, but are you willing to lay it before him? Some broke branches there. What are you willing to break down that's in your life? Yes, yes. Place it before the King of Kings yes. and the Lord of Lords. Amen. Place it before him yes. so that he can be, so that he can walk upon it. Yes. And that's that thing that's been bothering you because we all have something and every time we get ready to feel like God is ready to bless us, all of a sudden we hear this little voice in our head telling us, you ain't going there. God can't use you. Are you crazy? He's going to expose you. The devil is a liar this morning. Lay it before him. Throw it before him. And let him walk over it. And make him king of kings today. Yes. Amen. They lay their clothes before Jesus. 
the crowd that went ahead and follow all of them called out Hosanna to David's son. In essence, save now. I don't want to wait until tomorrow. I don't even want to wait until later. Now. God, whatever you have for me, yeah. I want you to do it. Yeah. Now. now. Do it now. When we look closely at the dynamics of the first Palm Sunday, we are not really surprised that at Friday I'll come. Mm. On the surface, it seemed like the triumphant entrance was just a grand celebration. Was was a grand celebration, but underneath we see the seed of the crucifixion laying lying among the palms. In essence, Palm Sunday, that first Palm Sunday, was a funeral procession. Mm. Jesus knew the cheers would have turned yes. very soon. Wow. And Sunday they shouted Hosanna and treated him like the king of the Jews. But Friday they hang him on the cross and put a sign saying the king of the Jews. Our scripture reading shows that when Jesus went to church on that memorial day, for some of the people he showed contempt. In verse 12, Jesus went straight to the temple and threw out everyone who had set up shop buying and selling. He kicked over the table of the loan shop and stall of the dove merchants. And quoted this text, my house was designed a house of prayer. You have made it a hangout for thieves. Yes. For others, he showed pity. And I'm winding down. The blind and the lame came at the temple and he healed them. And this is what I, I, I like about it. He said, now there was room for the blind and the cripple to get in. They came to Jerusalem and they were healed. In essence, Jesus got rid of the tradition. He got rid of the stuff that was hindering folks from approaching him. I believe it's time we forget about our tradition yes. and our culture yes. and how it used to be yes. so that the door can be wide open yes. that people understand if you are if you are in need you can come to the house of God yes. and be healed yes. Yes. Amen. this is supposed to be a place for hurting people Amen. people who need a savior yes Looking for the king. This is just a hospital. For the wounded. For the hurting. And as a doctor. Your greatest. Victory. Is when you heal that person. And send them back home. That's right. sure. When you're able to diagnose the problem. Mm -hmm. And treat. Yes. The problem. Jesus, being king for a day, was about all Jerusalem could endure. If Jesus would pay us a visit today, doubtless he would be accepted too. We would rejoice. Mm -hmm. We would be happy to see him. Yes. We're happy to have him. Yes. Until he entered the temple. Until he entered the temple for religious professions. Until he walks into her church and see what's going on. Until he walks into our hearts and see what's going on. What about our personal temper today as I close? When Jesus showed up He had to get rid of the money changers. Yes. He had to get rid of the stuff that was not supposed to be in the temple. The Bible said, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God? Yes. What would Jesus find in your heart, in your temple today? Okay. 
we have taken our palms and we have celebrated and we have laid it before him. But after that he entered the temple. What will he find in your temple? Would Jesus find our temporal house of prayer? Would Jesus find our worship in truth? Would he find our temple with an interest for the lost soul? Would he find it a temple of a bunch of folks who is just tired, ready to give up, can't take it no more? It is possible this morning, like that crowd, to reject Jesus. Just want him to be king just for a day. But if he's not king forever, he's not king at all. Amen. We reject him, and I'm closing, by ignoring his words. We reject him by failing to grow. We crucify him where we show doubt and don't trust him. When we backslid. Let me tell you this morning, on that some Palm Sunday, first Palm Sunday, everyone had their own interests as to what they wanted from God. Amen. Yes. Just like all of us here this morning. Mm -hmm. Every one of us. My wife and I are here, and we should be on the same page, but if you ask us, we have a different need. And we would want from God, <laughs> want God to change right now. Yes, yeah, true. So like that crowd who wanted a specific thing, each group wanted a specific thing, but they only wanted it for that day. Because mm -hmm. when they didn't get it that day, they said, crucify him. Yes. Forget about him. Mm -hmm. sure. Just like when we pray, we might pray for healing of a loved one and they die. And we say, forget about it. Forget about him. But are you willing to make him God forever? He's either king right now or he's not king at all. Yes. He's Lord of all or not Lord yes. at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So on this Palm Sunday, house of praise, epicenter, hope, I want us to start making our temper, our life, a living example. Yes. 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 Everywhere we go. Yes. On the job, in the bathroom, yes. anywhere, at home, anywhere we are, we are to make God our king. Yes. Yes. We don't want a part-time God. Yes. We don't want a part-time king. Yes. We want him to live in our life forever yes. and ever yes. and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so on this Palm Sunday. Instead of asking you what you do want from God, I'm going to pray for everybody. Yes, yes. Those who are joining us online, I'm going to pray for you too. Yes. That whatever we need, what? Help us, Lord. the most important thing, as I mentioned before, is understanding who is this. Now I'm going to pray that we will make him our king. Stand with me.
Just like this.